It's understood by scientists and researchers that the images generated by microscopes are limited by the stochastic nature of light. Of course, in most cases, this problem can be improved by simply increasing the light levels on the sample a scientist is attempting to observe through a microscope. But this quickly becomes tricky inside the human body. Powerful lasers that would otherwise improve this have the potential to damage living cells. But because light contains packets of energy known to us as photons, researchers have built a new quantum microscope that is imaging biological systems in unprecedented clarity. And it accomplishes this through quantum entanglement. We're going to talk about this quantum leap forward. Huh. Get it? In microscope technology. But first, be sure to drop me a like, share this video, comment down below, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell to never miss a video. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Echoes of Olympus Mons, and this is Science Guide. Microscopes have been invaluable tools used in a variety of different fields, allowing us to see far beyond the limits set by the natural resolution of our eyes. For thousands of years, the limit of what we could see of smaller objects was set by magnifying glasses, but this changed in the 17th century when the first microscope was invented. This first invention consisted of two adjustable lenses that allowed for what was, at the time, an unprecedented leap forward in magnification. This kind of microscope is still widely used today in diagnostic medicine and in other forms of research. Every microscope on the market uses light to image samples. These are called optical microscopes. The simplest models use sunlight, often redirected with a mirror onto the object that needs to be observed. But redirecting the sun's light is not a very convenient solution, since this means you probably can't image anything at night. So we invented microscopes that utilized halogen light bulbs integrated inside the microscope instead allowing for even greater resolution and paving the way for more advanced bright field microscopes. The general rule is the more powerful the light source, the greater the contrast and resolution becomes on a given sample. And with the advent of laser technology, it should be no surprise that the most advanced optical microscopes we have today use lasers, which bombard samples with coherent light. There's just one problem with this. Just as sunlight focused through a magnifying glass can burn objects, like ants. What? So can these powerful lasers. And what's more is that organic material seems to be far more vulnerable to this kind of photo damage that can be caused by these advanced telescopes. And as you can probably imagine, this can leave important samples damaged and it can kill them outright. So no bueno, right? Well, thankfully, we finally have a solution in the first ever quantum microscope. An important type of microscopy developed within the past few decades is known as coherent Raman microscopy, which was basically discovered by Chandraskar Raman and Kari Manikam Krishnan, who observed nonlinear interactions of light and molecules in 1928. Coherent Raman microscopy, or CR microscopy for short, is a powerful tool that is used in biomedical sciences and many other fields of study. It allows for in vivo imaging, which is a method of visualizing living organisms through non-invasive means, basically molecular imaging of cell cellular functions and molecular processes through the use of biomarkers, which I now realize doesn't sound very basic at all. But one problem with this approach is what's known as the short noise limit, which basically means that noise cannot be reduced through normal means. But thankfully, we have a solution now. According to a paper published in Nature called Quantum Enhanced Nonlinear Microscopy, a new quantum microscope may dethrone current CR microscopy as the most advanced microscope on the planet. University of Queensland researchers have created a quantum microscope that has revealed biological structures that were previously thought to be impossible to image. This quantum microscope is powered by the science of quantum entanglement. You know, that thing that Einstein once mockingly called spooky action at a distance? But since we haven't really covered quantum entanglement much here on the channel, let's go ahead and break it down in a way that hopefully does not make all of our brains bleed. Quantum entanglement is a physical phenomenon that occurs when a group of particles is generated, interacts, or shares spatial proximity in such a way that the quantum state of individual particles in a group can't be properly described independently. Basically, this means that each particle shares a connection across space, where the properties of one particle informs the properties of another. I guess it's kind of like an invisible telephone connection between two particles. When we observe one of the particles, it gets on the phone and informs the other how to behave. Except, as far as we know, there is nothing connecting these two particles. Nothing physical, at least. 
Particles can be quantum entangled across vast distances even. In fact, quantum entanglement was once a hotly debated topic between proponents of the classical standard model and quantum physics. When Einstein described this phenomenon as spooky action at a distance, it's because he wanted absolutely nothing to do with it and mocked it openly. He would have preferred a less complicated means to explain the observation of quantum entanglement, or maybe even that it didn't exist at all, than the actual explanation that we have today, because it definitely complicates things. Experiments have measured the physical properties of particles. Through these studies, we have been able to accurately describe a particle's position, spin, polarization, and momentum. And in some cases, it was found that entangled particles can be perfectly correlated. But what does that mean? Well, as an example, if a pair of entangled particles is generated and their spin is registered as zero, but the particle is observed to have a clockwise spin on a first axis, then the spin of the other particle, which was zero, will now be counterclockwise. Spooky, right? This behavior can give way to seemingly paradoxical effects meaning that any measurement of a particle's properties results in an irreversible wave function collapse of that particle and changes the original quantum state. These measurements and observations affect the entire entangled system. Einstein was convinced that this was totally impossible. He thought that such an effect would have violated local realism, hence his comments. But Einstein was shown to be wrong by experiments that proved that the spin of one particle could inform the spin of another, even when separated by miles or kilometers for our UK buddies. Now, there are still outliers, people who don't believe that there is any effect at all and quantum mechanics as a whole is just bunk. But the thing is, they're just wrong. Okay, I think that pretty much explains it, right? No, 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 bad computer. No, we didn't, we're not getting into that. There's no time. Get it, get it out of here. Okay, that's more like it. We'll worry about the observer effect another day. Well, wait. What are you? No, there's no speculation alert this time. Stop that. Stop it. Bad computer. Cue the title card. The computer has gone rogue. As was explained earlier before the computer threw a fit, older CR microscopes were able to perform groundbreaking biomolecular fingerprinting as well as unprecedented clarity in sample images. But the photo damage limit was a major problem, but traditional light-based microscopy also has this problem, so it seemed like there was no solution to this. Until now, that is. Like we said earlier, the quantum microscope is powered by the science of quantum entanglement. Professor Warwick Bowen of UQ's Quantum Optics Lab and the ARC Center of Excellence for Engineered Quantum Systems said that this was the first sensor that used entanglement and also exceeded the performance of existing microscopes. Through an experiment described in the paper, it's demonstrated that this new quantum sensor is capable of using quantum photon correlations, allowing for a signal-to-noise ratio that is far beyond the photo damage limit of conventional microscopes. It's a new type of CR microscope that offers sub-wavelength resolution, which incorporates bright quantum-correlated illumination. These correlations allow for the imaging of molecular bonds within a cell with a 35% increase to clarity. Yeah, you heard that right, molecular bonds. This basically means that with this new CR microscope, we're able to see biological structures that would have been impossible to resolve in any other microscope on the planet prior to its invention. Professor Bone explains, This breakthrough will spark all sorts of new technologies, from better navigation systems to better MRI machines, you name it. Entanglement is thought to lie at the heart of a quantum revolution. We finally demonstrated that sensors that use it can supersede existing non-quantum technology. This is exciting, it's the first proof of the paradigm-changing potential of entanglement for sensing. Quantum Technologies Roadmap, an Australian company, thinks that these new quantum sensors will lead to a wave of new technological advances and innovations through a plethora of different fields, like engineering, healthcare, resource management, and even transportation. In fact, in Professor Bowen's own words, the best light microscopes use bright lasers that are billions of times brighter than our sun. Yeah, billions. Those biological samples aren't just cooked, they're extra crispy. Mmm, crispy. The new quantum microscope is able to provide an image that is 35% improved in terms of clarity without destroying the cell, and without using invasive means like dyes or sensors injected into the body. 
The benefits of this are pretty obvious, as Bowen suggests that it will lead to a much better understanding of living systems and improved diagnostic technologies in the medical field. It quite literally is a quantum leap forward. Sam Beckett would be proud. And the potential for this technology is basically boundless. But microscopes aren't the only technology that entanglement is revolutionizing. We're on the verge of major breakthroughs in computing, communications, and if you believe some experts, transportation. Bowen went on to say that computing faster than any conventional computer was demonstrated by Google two years ago as the first demonstration of absolute advantage in computing. The last piece of the puzzle was sensing, and we've now closed that gap. This opens the door for some wide-ranging technological revolutions. This makes me really wonder, oh wow, you actually did it right. Whether this technology might be used in the future to produce the first direct images of the subatomic level. I mean, it could, right? And as a bit of further speculation, well, I guess the computer has forgiven me. And yes, that's two speculation alerts right next to each other. You're welcome, Lady Gigi. It makes me wonder if this quantum revolution is what will cause the technological singularity, a concept and term that was first used by John von Neumann in 1958, where technological growth becomes uncontrollable with irreversible changes to human civilization. I think it's certainly possible. Perhaps quantum computing is what will finally allow artificial intelligences to be pushed over the edge into becoming sentient. If you dug this content, be sure to drop me a like and comment down below. Where do you think this new quantum sensor and quantum technology as a whole is leading? And be sure to smash that subscribe button, ring that bell to never miss an episode of the show, and check out the Patreon while you're at it. Couldn't hurt, right? And speaking of which, look at all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.